How worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and divinity and wisdom and strength and honour. To him belong glory and power for ever and ever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Welcome everybody to the Feast of Christ the King here at St. John's in Clevedon. We're sorry we're beginning a little bit later than advertised. We've had one or two technical problems. Uh, the challenge of today is simply this to enthrone Christ in our hearts and in our minds and in our bodies and to do this so as to become more Christ-like Christ the Servant King so at the beginning of Mass as ever we call to mind our sins and our shortcomings and we ask for God's grace that we may indeed enthrone Christ in our hearts and minds and bodies and in all that we do. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, to our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, 
that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And now we listen to the scriptures. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I am going to look after my flock myself and keep all of it in view. As a shepherd keeps all his flock in view when he stands up in the middle of his scattered sheep, so shall I keep my sheep in view. I shall rescue them from wherever they have been, scattered during the mist and darkness. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will show them where to rest. It is the Lord who speaks. I shall look for the lost one, bring back the stray, bandage the wounded, and make the weak strong. I shall watch over the fat and healthy. I shall be a true shepherd to them. As for you, my sheep, the Lord says this, I will judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and he goats. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. There, is there is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall, I shall want. want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ. But all of them in their proper order, Christ as the first fruits, and then, after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority, and power. For he must, put, he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. And when everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will be subject in, t in his turn to the one who subjected him to all things. So that God may be in all, all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. 
Almighty God, cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessings on him who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the coming kingdom of our father David. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit down. So Jesus' depiction of the Last Judgment, which is unique to St. Matthew's Gospel, is surely one of the best-known passages in the whole of Holy Scripture. Today's gospel is not a parable, but an apocalyptic revelation with dialogue, that's a quote, between the judge and the judged. The magisterial New Jerome biblical commentary calls it a masterpiece, the high point and grand finale of Jesus' public ministry in St. Matthew's Gospel. 
the very next thing that occurs is the meeting of the council to plan Jesus' death. So, the last judgment and the death of Jesus belong together. The Son of Man, who sits on his glorious throne as King and Judge, is the very same Son of Man who is handed over to sinners and who gives his life as a ransom for many whose body and blood are food for the hungry. But this is a very different kind of judge from what we are used to. This judge is not judgmental. It's critical to see why the Father gives over all judgment to the Son of Man. The Father sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God incarnate in the person of the Son of Man renders the last judgment because the Son of Man's entire mission from the very beginning has been to seek and save the lost sheep. Come unto me, all ye that travel and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is the one, the Son of Man, to whom God has given final judgment. And it is very good news. One of the many things meant by Jesus in his self-description, Son of Man, is that he is the representative man, the one true, whole, fully human being. In him, all of us, men, women and children, see our own health and wholeness, our integrity, our completeness. So when acts of kindness are done, the Son of Man receives them in the person of the least of these, my family, because he, has gave, he gave himself for and identifies with them. Likewise, when the least of these are neglected, ignored, despised, or treated cruelly, then the Son of Man is afflicted in their afflictations, inasmuch as you did it, or did not do it, to the least of these, you did it, did not do it to me. So in St. Matthew's Last Judgment, the king reveals to the sheep and the goats the truth of their lives by describing their deeds. In clothing the naked, feeding the hungry, visiting the prisoner, love is at issue. Their love, or lack of it, is manifested by their behaviour. And as they are described and revealed, the issue then becomes whether they have the capacity to enjoy the blessing of the King's presence forever. And in this way, God's infinite mercy surrounds but does not contradict God's perfect justice. In Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, God has gone to the uttermost to remove every possible obstacle between himself and his children, children of all times and places, like the loving father in the parable of the prodigal son. The only remaining obstacle is our free will. The Holy Spirit does just about everything to bring us back home, but there's one thing he does not do. He does not coerce us against our will. He does not coerce us because love, the giving of love, must be free. 
We can't be forced to love. We ourselves may, like the great poet John Donne, cry out, batter my heart, three-personed God. But this is a cry from the heart for help that arises from a choice that has been made. Faith, hope, love, abide, these three, writes the Apostle. But the greatest of these is love. The reason love is greater than faith or hope is that in the end, faith and hope are fulfilled by sight. In the end, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, we will have arrived and Jesus will have his dialogue with us along the lines of the gospel, faith and hope will see their object, but love will still be necessary forever, because God is love. Without love, we will not be at home with God. Love grows stronger by exercise, it expands by being spent. The Son of Man has shown us how to love, has opened the door to eternal life, and he's commanded us to love one another, and especially the poor. Let us feed on him, and let us love one another as he loves us, and follow him back home to our Father, and there in heaven be lost in wonder love and praise. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and this wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself and shares in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the sacrifice.
wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with the oil of gladness you have anointed Christ the Lord, your only Son, to be our great High Priest and King of all creation. As priest he offered himself once for all upon the altar of the cross and redeemed the human race by this perfect sacrifice of peace. As King he claims dominion over all your creatures that he might bring before your infinite majesty a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a king of justice, love and peace. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, 
Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice, with praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of John the Evangelist, our patron, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant us peace in our day in your mercy keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our saviour jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ you said to your apostles i leave you peace my peace i give to you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us the peace and unity of that kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting.
celery in the body of Christ. Martin, the body of Christ. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they plenteously bring forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. life of Jesus Christ in our midst. We know God's judgment and mercy, and in the glory of Jesus we acclaim the image of God invisible. So with the whole church we turn to Christ this day, acknowledging that he alone rules in truth. Jesus, Saviour and Judge, you have confounded earthly judgment by choosing to be numbered among the transgressors. 
May your love comfort all who are in prison, all judged guilty by society or church, and all who live on the margins of the human family. Jesus, condemned and powerless before your enemies, grant to the leaders of peoples to know that their rule is in the service of a greater law, the law of love. Jesus, firstborn of the dead, through the blood of your cross you give unity to the divided. Give that unity to your church, to your world, and to us. Jesus, pelican feeding your young with your own blood. May the dead who have partaken of your chalice be with you in paradise. A prayer of Pope Francis for these days. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of good health and peace that we have enjoyed for so many years. As we find ourselves in this time of crisis today, we ask that your divine protection and mercy may be upon each of us. Come with your spirit and guide the minds of those working to discover a treatment to the virus. Grant them wisdom, knowledge and clarity of mind so that all peoples will be free from the threat of this ailment. We pray for the healthcare workers who are standing in the front line of this battle. Father, we thank you for their hearts of service putting the needs of society before their own, generously responding to the cry of your people, we ask that you will grant them strength and protection as they give of themselves in selfless service. May you fill them with your Holy Spirit as they work to be your healing hands and feet. Father, we also surrender to you all those who have been afflicted with the virus and all those who have died. To the living grant your healing grace, merciful Father, so that they may recover swiftly and continue to be witnesses of your love in their lives. And to the departed, grant rest. And Mary, our mother, we ask for your intercession in this great time of need. Cover each of us with your blue mantle of protection so that we may be preserved in good health to continue to glorify your Son, Jesus Christ. We make this prayer through Christ, our Saviour and our Redeemer. Amen. Therefore we before him bending this great sacrament reveal. Types and shadows have their ending for the newer rite is here. Faith our outward sense befriending makes the inward vision clear. Glory let us give and blessing to the Father and the Son. 
on our might and praise addressing, while eternal ages run, ever to his love confessing, who from both with both is one. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reference the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of your redemption. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.